Hello, Taurus. Um, welcome to the channel. Welcome back if you're an existing sub. Um, so we're going to do your reading for May, Taurus, and I'm going to start with a couple of oracle cards. And I've just kind of let them come out without agenda and um, ask to be shown what you need the most right now. So um, there's an underlying energy here, Taurus, of... Um, Yeah, I'm just going to speak straight into the first card. So this is a new deck I've just got, which is called the Lantern Oracle. And it's kind of the shadow soul, beautiful energy. They're all lovely, dark, moody cards. Um, so the first card out is about a misalignment. Um, which makes perfect sense because your reading for last month was come to the edge. Okay, congratulations. If you're getting this card, you are probably at the edge. You are probably on the precipice of great change. Okay, and with that will come every conflict <laughs> to get in the way. <laughs> okay, it's so good. So what I really noticed <clears throat> with this card is her hair flowing right down here, all the way up here into the blackness. Okay. And the moon energy behind her. And what this is saying to me is I'm making a connection with source, okay? So source and <clears throat> wow, so many words coming in. So this is speaking into the cosmic black, okay? And you are the cosmos. So in meeting this, you're meeting this at a very deep level, in the darkness, in the darkness level. And you might sense this coming in and that might fill you with a something, I'm getting the word trepidation, because learning to navigate the, the dark um, is something that we haven't really been familiarized with or educated into, we've been taught historically throughout time to fear the dark, the dark is bad, the dark is evil. But the darkness of the cosmos is basically all that is not, it's the pure potential of active intelligence, okay, if we put it really cleanly and simply. I've been talking recently about Shiva energy coming in and that might be for the collective because I featured Shiva in today's Off You Can reading, which is a collective reading. So it might be useful for you to have a quick gander through that. And um, this, is, this energy is gonna come in so clean and so pure that we might not know what to do with it because the subconscious won't be able to map to it. And it's coming in under the energy of the current moon energy as we move between phases. Okay, so this is talking about a misalignment. Um, and until we come into alignment, then we're in misalignment. And there's no shade. There's no shade there. Okay, so that's feeling like the underlying energy. So I pulled you out a couple of beastie cards from the beastie deck. And there's an invitation here. But what is infinite, Chrissy? That's a great question. Well, the infinite is the unknown, it's the cosmos, okay. And the cosmos within you is the darkness within you that contains all of your gold, the as yet unmanifested gold. Look at this starfish, five energy. Okay, we're in a five year and a five month.
meeting life in all different directions at once, looking backwards and forwards at once, dynamic change, expansion, growth, shift. Okay. <clears throat> So what I got with this scarab beetle is it's all encoded within you. It's like, as I was gazing into this energy, I could kind of see it being activated, little points of light activating, different codings coming out, different symbols coming out. So there is, is in May, an activation. <laughs> yeah. So what's happening at the moment in the collective is there are so many light activations going on as we do this massive Kundalini, uh, this massive uh, karmic clearing. So it's a big ending of cycles, big, big ending of cycles. And what I'm noticing is the mind is on a bit of a satellite delay at the moment. It's like the mind comes in and goes, who's just moved all the furniture around? What's happened in here? <laughs> I left it tidy and organized. Okay, so the mind is going into, yeah, but what do I do with it? But, but why is it here? Da, 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 It's just mind. So be kind to the mind. Be gentle. Just say it's not time yet. I'm figuring this out. Because big picture, you know, what we're being guided to do is to figure it out through that priestess energy. Okay, and there's not much of a blueprint for that. We're, we're drawing it as we're going through. So, yeah, so when we let the magic work through us, we work with anomaly. <laughs> Which might not be easy for a fixed earth, okay. So anomaly is, it's okay not to understand. Anomaly is, it's okay that that is the polar opposite of what you think your belief system is. So when magic works through you, you begin to notice synchronicities. You begin to notice particular songs that come up that might have been in your dreams last night. It's like, so the first reaction might be, what the? Maybe a better response might be, oh, where's my journal, where's my pen? Right, okay, capture that, leave it. And there might be 30 of these little synchronicities. It's only when you take the bird's eye view and put them together that you'll go, oh, wow, I get that now, okay. So maybe be with the weird, be with the odd, be with the not understandable yet. Because as we birth the new, we cannot know what we're doing. We cannot, if we know what we're doing, we're birthing the old, rebirthing the old, okay? And the underlying energy for the beasties is you truly are never alone. All of these signs and synchronicities is active intelligence dancing with you? It's the universe dancing with you. And are you dancing with it? Because when you really start dancing with it, amazing things happen. Okay, so let's move on to your tarot cards. I'm gonna pull some clarifiers out. Um, okay, so. First card out, not too shabby. <clears throat> Look at the contrast. The sun and the moon, the masculine and the feminine, the light and the dark. Wow, this is like the temperance card split into two. <laughs> And when these energies come in at the same time, they can trigger in a conflict, old narratives, old dialogue. I can't, I'm not good enough. It never happens for me, that kind of stuff. 
but what if it can absolutely now because we're working through a cleaner potential our access to active intelligence is faster quicker sharper can you see yourself like this because that there actually looks like a bolt of lightning coming in so masculine sun that equals kundalini there is a ton of kundalini activation going on at the moment okay yeah well, what does that mean kundalini is the creative raw creative universal creative energy power so maybe doing some work with your sacral might help that sacral is the center of creativity and sexual expression how you express yourself in your rawness as a human being okay and in comes the conflict okay so we've got the ace of swords in reverse and the six of swords in reverse so these two together feel like a bit of hanging on energy it's not stubborn it doesn't feel stubborn it feels resistant and a little bit fearful nervous nothing too big it's just a, there's like a nervousness in my heart and so what that's going to do is that's going to reduce the amount of clarity around what's coming in through this moon cosmos energy it's going to reduce the clarity so it might make it harder to grab it and bring it in because there might be a part of your mind that wants it explaining please <laughs> i want the handbook for this it hasn't been written you're writing it okay <coughs> so the six of swords the right way up is about it's kind of it feels like it's it's about letting go to achieve balance, but it's about the sadness of letting go, the loss of letting go, and it's in the reverse. So there's some resistance to letting go of something, and it's blocking the clarity. It's, it's going to block the lesson that's coming in. So let's get some clarifiers. And the underlying card is the two of wands. It's that what next energy? Yeah. It's looking ahead what next and the mind might be wanting to figure it out and it just might not be time because the invitation here is to open to infinite possibility and that's quite a beingness thing it's not really a doingness thing this is passion okay passion is the active this moon energy opening to the infinite allowing magic to work through you that's the feminine moon energy this is the masculine sun okay that's the underlying energy is what next okay let's have some clarifiers um let me clarify the six of swords in reverse please thank you yeah. Wow. There's an injustice here. Yeah. So you've got justice in reverse with the ten of wands which is about burdens putting down the burdens and that's coming in with lover's energy so this is about 
partnerships and they can be partnerships with inner aspects or partnerships relationships in your world but comes in on the number six which is heart-centered energy and it's also about balance balance of that six i'm getting it's really simple but i get a burdensome relationship that feels so heavy and that's literally in my heart, it's not in any of the chakras, it's in the heart, a burdensome energy. And that's to clarify this resistance to letting go, the resistance to the grief of letting go. So this could literally be the end of a relationship. And how do I put the burden down? Now, Taurus, I'm going to call it like it is. In your amazing resourcefulness, sometimes you overgive. And sometimes that nudges you into this victim martyr energy. Mm. I'm just noticing. There's a void opening up here. Yeah. This is the void coming in. It's coming in through the throat. There's something to be said here. There's something that needs saying. Because when you turn the justice card the right way up, you will automatically do the right thing. Because you will absolutely trust that you're not alone in this. Okay. Your higher self's got you. If you work with guides, they've got you. Okay. But what does it look like if you do the right thing? Is that going to cause upset in the system? Is that going to cause you to have to let go of something and maybe move into a period of grief? What it will do is it will turn that the right way up and in will come the clarity, but only when you go through that gateway of letting go of something to do with a relationship, a burdened relationship. And again, this might not be in the physical reality, this might be an old narrative about where you were burdened as a child and now you have the potential to set yourself free. So it's just moving baby steps through that energy and it can be a bit thick and cloying. It doesn't feel light in here. I do feel like I'm carrying a weight on my shoulders. Okay, so I think that's the principal message. So let's just, um, okay. Let's bring them through a little bit. Let's bring them through a little bit. Um, show them where they're aiming. Yeah. Shebang. <laughs> Reciprocity, equal give and take in love. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> I don't need to say anymore. If you can tolerate the eh, of the let go and maybe some grief and maybe the realignment of what's hidden, what has yet to be burst through you, you're gonna come into the two of cups energy. <laughs> right, so I know these are your favorite cards. What can you surrender to? Because I know Taurus loves to surrender. Thank you. Opa. Okay. I'm glad this came out because I was really noticing the oranges. Okay, I'm gonna bring that one in too. I know that's solar plexus, but you've got to have the will to do it. You've got to have the will to harness this energy and drive it. Red, sacral, red, sacral. Well, sorry, dark orange. Sacral. 
surrender to creativity. Okay. Mm, immediately this speaks into narcissism. This speaks into the child or the younger self being nothing but a mirror for somebody else. So you can see there, while well, almost the base, the sacral, solar plexus, the heart and the throat are blocked. Because the job of a child of narcissistic parents or a child of a narcissistic world, whichever applies, and if it doesn't, just it's cool. Rarely gets to be themselves again. Look at all the orange in here. She's standing knee deep in orange. Solar plexus bursting through the butterfly of transformation. Hmm. How do you let your imagination soar? That's what that's about. Do you stay open to all creative ideas about how to pursue a dream or solve a problem? Because when you stay open to all creative ideas, then comes the potential to do something completely new, which might be a bit nerve wracking. <laughs> I might look a bit of a tip. <laughs> I might get it wrong. They might not like me. Okay. They might not like me because I find my purpose and my value in mirroring others and being useful to others. Maybe. What if you turn that mirror around? Could you fully look at yourself? Because you're standing on the edge here. You know, last month's reading was come to the edge. Passion, passion, passion. <clears throat> passion, passion, passion. Passion, sacral chakra, birth, creativity. Okay, so I'm going to leave you, Taurus. This is a very clear message. Um, there might be something you've got to let go of. There might be some burdens you've got to put down, and that might feel some kind of way. But this is what you're heading towards, exploring creativity, the creative principle of life. Not talking about painting. The creative principle of life, whatever that means to you. To come into balance and reciprocity and love. Yowza, what shall I call this? Sex. <laughs> I'll think of something. I'll think of something. Right, my darlings, that's it, you beautiful Taurians. Um, good luck. Keep, keep moving through. We're in this opening now. <laughs> it's like the universe is going, do you want to let go of that old narrative? Yeah, okay, this is what you've got to know. <laughs> no, I don't want to, I like that old narrative. It's comfortable. Well, rip the band-aid off. Right, I'm going. <clears throat> I'll be back soon. Um, I love you guys. Please like, share, subscribe, uh, drop me a comment. Um, and good luck to you. Go get them, tigers. See ya.